Hello and welcome to Guarantee RV's live stream. We call it G Live. We come to you fresh from Gar from Guarantee RV Super Centers in Junction City, Oregon, every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. My name is Marshall White. I'm your host today. I'm joined by my co-host Quinn Larson, also known as Doctor Q, because he's our RV doctor. Good morning, Doctor Q. Good morning, Marshall. Good morning, Internet. Thanks for joining us. We have a fantastic topic today, and I'm really thinking that folks are going to uh, appreciate because we're going to try and explain the basics of the 12-volt DC system versus the, the shore power 110 uh, alternating current AC system, which uh, uh, we flip back and forth uh, between depending on circumstances as we're out RVing and enjoying uh, the RV parks that we go to. Uh, we're going to jump right into it, but before we do, uh, I just want to encourage folks to please uh, ask any and all questions. There is no stupid question on G Live. Uh, we will do our best to get them answered for you right here live. And if you do, uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to reciprocate with a small gift. So uh, stay tuned for uh, some great in entertaining action today in this Winnebago Navion as we go through uh, 12 volt uh, DC versus 110 AC. Uh, uh, Dr. Q, the, the main thing I hear uh, customers qu uh, ask about are a lot of times it's uh, air conditioner related. You know, I, I'm trying to run my AC, but, uh, you know, it's not working. Why not? Uh, is that what you saw in all your years doing RV retail? Yeah, on many occasions I've had someone ask me how to run their, their air conditioner or their microwave off of a solar panel or their 12-volt system. Because the 12-volt system and the 110 system are married together through the converter, it becomes a little confusing to people. They really, truly are two separate systems. They have some interaction, but they run different components. So you can get some, uh, you can get 12-volt from a solar panel and that will charge batteries. You only get 110 volt from a generator, but through the converter, that will also charge batteries. So I think that's where some of the confusion lies. But 12 volt is strictly your lights. It powers PC boards for appliances. Um, it's going to do your water pump, that sort of sort of thing. So your 110 system is now going to be like your air conditioner, your microwave, your television, that that those types of components, like more household components. Um, so the systems are, as I said, are kind of married, and we've developed a cute little graphic for them. If we could drop that graphic in. All right. So if you look at the graphic here, we've got 12 volts coming in from a solar panel into the converter. We also have 110 volts coming in from the shore power cord, which is your, uh, your plug-in cord. That's either plugged into an outlet or plugged into a generator. That's going to provide 110 volts. But those, both those systems come into the converter. The converter then converts the 110 into 12 volt and distributes it. Some goes to battery charge, some goes to appliance. When the 110 system comes in, it's converting that down. When the 12 volt comes in, it's just distributing that. And then the converter also has a power distribution center built into it, which is also distributing 110 volt. So again, they're married together, and it gets kind of muddy when you talk about the converter. The best way to, des to describe the two systems or keep them separate is your 12 volt system is going to be automotive fuses. Your 110 volt system is going to be household breakers. So. When you bring that 110 volt system in, it does distribute some of it, but it also uses some of it to create 12 volt. Seems like uh, almost without fail, I go out camping and I uh, plug into shore power and I can't get my air conditioner running right out of the gate. Any advice for our viewers on something like that? Air conditioner is going to be 110. So we're going to look at our 110 components. First of all, we're going to look at the breaker on the box where you have plugged in. Sometimes parks ask you to turn those breakers off when you plug in or unplug so that you may have missed the fact that that breaker at the pole is off. Uh, if that's not the case, I would go inside and I would find my GFI, which is going to be near, actually we can go right inside. I'll let the camera go ahead because we're going to sneak into the bathroom here because I'm going to show you where the GFI is. So this outlet here, that, out, that outlet there is a GFI outlet. So I would check and make sure that that hasn't tripped, and I would reset it if it had. Check my air conditioner. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here to the converter box. And as you can see, 
here on this side, those are your breakers. I would check those breakers. They're going to be listed. So microwave, AC. So if I wasn't getting AC, that would be the breaker I would be interested in. Because again, they're 110. Where, where is the converter box typically located? Generally, it is somewhere kind of out of view along the floor line, often near the bed or in some cabinetry, so that it's kind of hidden, but it, it is it easily accessible. So they don't, unfortunately, in the RV industry, they don't have a set place to put anything. So look along the floor line. You should be able to find it. It's usually a brown or a black uh, door that is pretty nondescript. Uh, it seems like from a troubleshooting standpoint, uh, you know, it'd be nice to be able to rule some things out. I, I suppose one of the tricks I've, I've seen is if my microwave digital time is on, then I, I know at least I've got shore power into the RV. Is that, is that a good way to rule certain problems out? Yeah, that's a good indicator. So if you're not getting, if you're trying to use your air conditioner and you're not getting any success, and you look at the microwave and there is no indicator, uh, no, uh, no clock, no time indicator, then, yeah, I would start looking for a 110 power source problem. Again, that would probably be the pole in that there is a separate breaker for the microwave and for the air conditioner. Um, part of that is because they draw so much, and that's also part of the reason that you really can't run them off a solar panel. There's a way to do an inverter and large battery banks, and we'll probably get into that in a different segment that's pretty involved. Um, this does give us an opportunity to talk about solar, though. This vehicle has an onboard solar, which is nice. So it's also telling us battery condition. Battery's at 12.4. We're not charging because we're inside. Uh, this is telling us that that battery is fully charged. Onboard solar is wonderful. It comes with a lot of vehicles these days. What we showed outside was a portable. Portable has some advantages if you have multiple toys. This obviously is is exclusive to this vehicle. Hard to take it off the roof and put it back on. Uh, so the portable sometimes can get, be of some benefit there too. Another silly question. Uh, at any point in time, can you run shore power and battery power at the same time, or are they mutually exclusive? Well, um, that's kind of an, inter that's an interesting question. So, so, so it's a yes and a no. Um, when you are plugged into shore power, your converter is taking that 110 volt and distributing it as 12 volt and charging batteries. So you are using the 12 volt system, you're just powering it through the shore cord. When you unplug that shore cord, your converter automatically grabs power from the 12 volt batteries and doesn't miss a beat. So your, all your interior lights in here are 12 volt. All your ambient light in here is 12 volt. Your water pump is 12 volt. The refrigerator PC board needs, uh, I think it's a little over 11 volts for the board to act correctly. If it gets below that, it's, beginning, it's gonna begin to give you a warning of low DC or that sort of stuff. Basically, the PC board is the brain in all of your appliances. It tells it all kinds of stuff in a refrigerator. It's telling it temperature, when to cycle, and, and that sort of thing. So you, in the refrigerator is pretty important. You don't want to lose food. What about, uh, you know, th this, presumably this is a motorhome, so it has a generator on board somewhere. How, you know, that's producing 110 that, that, that then is converted into DC, into the battery system, presumably. Uh, would that be another typical thing that I should worry about if I'm not getting AC or I'm not getting a microwave light? Good question. And yes, uh, with, a, with most motorized, you're going to find an onboard generator. Um, there's also a transfer switch. So if you're plugged into 110, that transfer switch picks short cord, even if the generator's running. If the generator is running and you're not plugged in, that transfer switch gets the 110 from the generator. There are breakers on the generator also. So if you've got everything running off the generator and you're still not getting certain components to run, and you've checked your breakers here inside, go out pull the panel, and there are a couple of breakers on the generator. Is that, is that something that any Tom, Dick, Harry should, should feel comfortable with? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they are right on the surface. You're going to pull the exterior panel, you're going to see them right on the surface. And a breaker is basically a switch. I mean, if it's tripped, you untrip it. If it trips back, that's when you need to see an, uh, some sort of expert or professional. You've got an actual problem. Sometimes they just trip because you, it's been hot outside, you ran the air conditioner. Unfortunately, as the temperature goes up, not only does the generator get less efficient, so does the air conditioner. They're working harder to do what they're supposed to do, and sometimes that takes you to tolerance, and you pop a breaker. If you pop that breaker back and it stays set, you shouldn't have an issue. If it, un, if it trips again, you're going to need to see an electrician of some sort. 
upgraded vice. I love it. So we have some other panels here. Uh, what can, what can you so this, about this this is your generator start and stop panel. Okay. So that's going to give us some in, uh, some information about you know the generator where we are. And it's also your monitor panel. Mm -hmm. So it's going to give us some monitor panel information too. And then we talked briefly about an inverter. An inverter and converter sound a lot alike. A converter takes 12 volt and makes, excuse me, an inverter takes 12 volt and makes 110, they're confusing. An uh, inverter takes 12 volt and makes 110 volts out of it. A converter takes 110 volts and makes 12 volt out of it. So with an inverter, you are asking small square boxes of 12 volt to provide you with 110. So that is a, a limited capacity to the amount of batteries. They've got lithium batteries now that are pretty amazing. They're expensive. As that technology comes down, you may see more and more uh, electronic uh, coaches. But at this point, so the inverter is still kind of a luxury. You can run a television for a quite a long period of time. But a microwave or an air conditioner, they just require too much water, too much amperage to really be efficient off of an inverter. Great lead in, and, and we'll talk more about inverters at uh, uh, one of our future episodes because uh, it is a a product uh, that that is very useful to some some uh, full timers. Uh, but before we jump into our uh, conclusion here, Quinn, I thought I'd just mention that uh, this is Guarantee's live stream. Uh, we come to you fresh every uh, Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. We love having our viewers with us and our in our audience. We thank you very much for your patronage. Uh, you know, we, we also love to answer questions. So uh, chime in. There is no silly question. We've got the expert, Dr. Q, our RV doctor. He can, uh, he can help us answer any question. If we can't answer it on air today, we will certainly post it to the to the live stream uh, recording afterwards to, to answer any and all questions. So uh, this is uh, a, a fantastic topic that we have going on today, the difference between our 12 volt charging system and our 110 shore power systems in a, in a motorized RV. We've learned an awful lot about uh, you know, if my AC isn't working, you know, why, you know, what do I need to do to fix that? How do I troubleshoot it between a 12 volt and a, and a 110 issue? We learned in particular for our, our heavier duty appliances, such as the AC and the microwave and the fridge that, you know, those, those, uh, uh, you know, in the case of the AC in particular, it needs 110 volts. I, I'm thinking the microwave uh, is pretty darn close. So, um, you know, we, we can we can check our breakers ourselves. We don't need we don't need to seek um, serve. We don't have to pay for service to get that advice. Um, and if that's all, and if they're um, if the breakers are fine, you know, it could be something more serious. We hope it's not, but uh, that's why we have the Guarantee RV Travel Center here in Junction City, Oregon, to answer those sorts of questions and determine whether or not uh, you need to, to, to have um, uh, RV service uh, performed. I was thinking, uh, Quinn, that maybe what we should do next is just um, um, try to determine which, uh, which appliances um, could be grouped together as 110 versus 12 volt and just kind of give one last lay of the land. You know, these are your 12 volts, these are your 110s. Absolutely. So, um, and we talked about motorized today because we're in a motorized vehicle. Almost every RV out there has a 110 and a 12 volt system, just the way they all work. So, um, your, as you said, kind of the, the heavy duty, the, the, the appliances that are gonna demand a lot of amperage and a lot of wattage are going to be your microwave, your air conditioner, um, your heat elements. So refrigerators, if you have a three-way refrigerator, that is 12 volt, 110, and gas. That heat element, that resistance element, requires quite a bit of, of uh, wattage. Um, also with the water heater, often there is a water heater 110 option. Um, that's gonna. That's also a resistance element. A resistance element just requires a lot of wattage. So even if it is an RV appliance that runs on 12 volt or gas, it still has. The, some of them still have the ability to run on 110. But your basic 110 components are going to be your microwave, your air conditioner, and your televisions. Televisions, flat screen TVs anymore. Just to muddy the waters a little further, are actually less than 110 volt. They step them down. But the way that they work throughout uh, all industries is that they plug into 110 so that when the RV industry, they don't bother trying to figure out how to run them off the 12 volt, they just plug them in. So, so if, my, if my TV isn't working, check my shore power. Just make sure I've got good 
good 110 uh, volt coming into the RV, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah. And again, it, it's kind of a it's a it's a, uh, a to Z. So we start with A, which would be the pole, the pedestal where we're plugged in. We're going to check that breaker. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come inside and we're going to check our GFI. GFI is a ground fault interrupter. Basically, electricity likes to travel in a circle. If anything breaks that circle, the GFI says, "Oh, there's something wrong with my system," and it shuts it down. It's a safety issue, or, or safety item. And if I understand correctly, it, you know, it's milliamps ver of resistance can throw that breaker, and so, you know, that that's at least in my experience, that's been one of the first things that solves my 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 problem with my TV or my AC is just just flipping that breaker. And I and I'll be the first to admit that some of this stuff is old news for long-time RVers, but we, there's there's far more people out there that have, are still becoming familiar with RVs than 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 the other way. So that's why we're going over this stuff. Um, what about in, in our lights? You know, uh, that, that's... That's all 12 volt. Okay. So that's running on your, uh, your battery power. Now, again, through the converter, you could be plugged in and providing 12 volt for them from the shore cord, but they're all 12 volt. All the interior lights are 12 volt. All your ambient light in here is 12 volt. What about the water pump? Water pump is 12 volt. Okay. Um, let's see. Most of your igniters, like if you turn on your water here and you hear tick, 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 boom, that's driven by 12 volt. That's actually through the PC board. That's part of its function. That's why that board needs 12 volt. I have had many, many occasions where I've had people ask me, my appliance is not working correctly. It was working yesterday. Now it won't work. The first thing I ask them is battery condition because they are super sensitive. Those boards, I mean, the difference between 12 and a half volts and 11 volts is not much. Your lights will stay the same. You won't see any brown out, but your appliances will begin to complain. They will, they will have issue with that low of, uh, low of voltage. And, uh, and I would imagine then at that point with battery condition, we're talking about do we have corrosion, you know, or do we have a, a dead cell on a battery? I, I don't know. Or have we been camping for four days and not realized we needed to charge it? Or maybe you've got kids or mom or dad doesn't understand that they can't turn on all the lights and leave them on all the time. When, you, when you're in the RV environment, you've got to be conscious of all con consumption, your water consumption, your electricity consumption. It becomes second nature, but in the beginning, it can be kind of hard to change home habits to RV habits. Yeah, yeah. well said. Anything else you want to share uh, on the inside here, Dr. Q? I think we've pretty well covered it. I mean, this is a brief overview of the two different systems. So, you know, we've given you a brief overview. We can go into depth on either one at a later date, and then when we do the inverter, obviously we'll go into more depth on both systems. Should we wrap her up? Sure. Okay. Well, uh, from all of us at uh, Guarantee RV Super Centers in Junction City, Oregon, we hope that you enjoyed this live stream and found it informative. Uh, again, if you have any questions after the fact, we'll, we'll answer those online on Facebook as well. Um, thank you for joining us. We'll be back again next week, uh, Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Thank you again. <laughs>